What does it mean to eat high protein? Why is everyone on Instagram making ice cream and flatbread out of cottage cheese? I want to talk about protein, my favorite macro. I love it and I love what it does for my body. Does that not look amazing? And then this whole brownie is 35 grams of protein. But why? Why is protein such a big deal? I promise it's not just for bodybuilders. And this part is key. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Caroline. I share health and fitness tips along with my workouts and recipes. I just competed in a bodybuilding show, but bodybuilding is not my entire life. I'm in a new routine, which I'm absolutely loving, making fun, healthy, high protein recipes. And today I wanna to talk about protein, my favorite macro. Not really, but kind of. I love it and I love what it does for my body. Last time we talked about macros in general, so be sure to check out that video if you want a little macro 101, but today we're gonna to dive deep into protein. Why is it so important? What does it mean to eat high protein? Why is everyone on Instagram making ice cream and flatbread out of cottage cheese? If you're starting your fitness journey, your social media is probably full of fitness tips and you're seeing high protein recipe one after another. But why? Why is protein such a big deal? I promise it's not just for bodybuilders. Every single one of us needs protein and chances are you're not getting enough. I know when I first started my fitness journey, I was definitely not eating enough protein. But if you're serious about your fitness goals, whether you want to build muscle, lose fat, or just feel your best, protein is going to be your best friend. Now I know you're thinking, Caroline, we get it. Protein is important, but trust me, once you understand why it's crucial and how you can use it effectively, it will change your entire approach to nutrition. I just think it's so important to understand the why for everything when it comes to health and fitness. If you don't understand the reason behind things and you just want the outcome, you're not gonna build the lifelong habits that you need for life. <laughs> so let's start with the basics. Protein is made up of amino acids, which I know you've heard are the building blocks of your body. Every time you work out, every time you lift weights, you're making teeny tiny tears in your muscle fibers. And protein comes along to repair and rebuild those muscles to making them bigger and stronger. Even if you're not trying to get jacked, I promise you're not gonna get bulky eating protein, but you do need it. It keeps you feeling full, helps maintain and build lean muscle, and even burns more calories during digestion than carbs or fat. Now, speaking of tearing up our muscles, and making them grow big and strong. We're gonna go hit the gym. It is shoulder day, which is my absolute favorite. Girls, I promise training upper body will not make you look manly. I think shoulders are so pretty on a woman and they really create a nice shape that's gonna help give the illusion of an hourglass figure. God gave me no waist and so I have to work really hard to create an hourglass and shoulders really help do that. So let's go work our shoulders. For each exercise, you wanna choose a weight where the last one to two reps are really challenging, bringing you close to failure. This level of intensity is key for hypertrophy, meaning increase in muscle size. The muscle you build through hypertrophy training gives your body shape and definition. We're gonna start with dumbbell shoulder presses. Start with the dumbbells at shoulder height and press the weight overhead, fully extending your arms without locking your elbows. Next up is a combo move and it's a burner. Lateral raises paired with front raise. So you're gonna do a lateral raise and then move straight into a front raise. You might need to go a little lighter than you normally would on a lateral raise. Now we're gonna isolate the lateral delts with just your standard lateral raise. Focus on form here. Don't swing the weights. If you find yourself swinging, go lighter. Time for some upright rows to work the entire shoulder. Grab a straight bar and pull up towards your chin. Keep the bar close to your body and move slow. Switching gears to triceps, now with some cable kickbacks. Cables are great because they maintain constant tension on the muscle throughout the entire range of motion. This means your triceps are working hard even at the bottom of the movement. We're gonna finish off strong with some dumbbell tricep extensions. Hold a dumbbell with both hands behind your head, elbows pointing forward. Extend your arms overhead, focusing on just extending your elbow. Lower the weight back down with control, feeling that stretch in your triceps. Remember, consistency is key. It's not just about today's workout, it's about showing up day after day. That's how real progress happens. You got this. Now I'm gonna make a little high protein snack. And yes, I will be using cottage cheese. I'm gonna make a little toast situation. So I'm just gonna mash up some fresh raspberries and top my sourdough with some cottage cheese and raspberries. So cottage cheese is a really good source of protein. One little trick you can do to see if a food is a good source of protein is when you're looking at the nutrition facts, you wanna see if there's 
10 grams of protein or more per 100 calories of the food. So I'm looking at this 2% fat cottage cheese and there's 13 grams of protein for 100 calories. So that is a good high protein source. Where if you look at peanut butter, there are eight grams of protein for 180 calories. So this is not a good protein source. I need to have a serious talk with whoever told the world that peanut butter is a good source of protein. It's not. It's great for healthy fats. You should not be eating peanut butter thinking you're getting protein, if that makes sense. So let's look at another option. Non-fat Greek yogurt, 18 grams of protein for 100 calories. Great source of protein. Turkey, just your good old regular turkey deli. There's 13 grams of protein for 60 calories. So for 100 calories, you're getting more than 20 grams. So turkey obviously is a good source of protein. My toast is all ready. I'm gonna top it with some good old cottage cheese and my kind of homemade raspberry jam. And now I've got a little protein toast. Mm, this is so good. You have to try that. Let's talk numbers really quick. How much protein do you actually need? A good starting point is one gram of protein per desired pound of body weight. So if you want to weigh 130 pounds, you should try to aim for 130 grams of protein. One caveat to that is if you have been tracking your food for a few weeks, which I really recommend you do if you're starting your fitness journey just to get a baseline of where you're at and you realize you're only eating 50 grams of protein, I would slowly increase your protein intake because it can be kind of hard on your digestion digestion to go from like 50 grams to 130 grams. 130 grams of protein can seem like a lot, especially if you haven't been eating protein throughout the day. But if you make sure you have a good protein source in each meal and snack, around 20 to 30 grams, then it becomes really easy to hit your protein goal. And I love sharing healthy, high protein recipes. So make sure you're subscribed to follow along for all the good recipes. For dinner tonight, I think we're gonna make a little lemon chicken pasta. And then I also am gonna show you guys one of my favorite treats I've been making, which again has cottage cheese <laughs> but it's a cottage cheese brownie and it's actually really good okay tonight we're making lemon leek pasta which if you don't know what a leek is this is a leek they're kind of like giant green onions and they kind of taste like that too this dinner is more on the labor intensive side but it's really yummy and sometimes it's just fun to make a fancy meal at home so we're going to rinse these really well and then thinly slice them i'm going to double this recipe just because when i cook i like to have a lot of leftovers and i'll link the recipe in the description i just think these are so funny because they just look exactly like giant green onions <laughs> You only want the white and pale green parts. So you just toss these big leafy things. I don't even know what you could use those for. Now we're gonna zest and squeeze some lemons. Got my lemon juice and lemon zest. Time to chop up some basil. The recipe does call for parsley, but I don't really like parsley, so I'm doing basil. Now we're gonna grate up some Parmesan. It does call for three quarters cup, but I don't think I've ever used that much. Okay, that's actually a lot. This will be plenty for doubling it. And I'm also gonna make a healthier, low fat Caesar salad dressing, and I'm gonna save some of the cheese for that. Okay, we're almost ready to start cooking. We just need to chop up some chives. Okay, now I'm gonna whip up, it's actually really quick, a healthy Caesar salad dressing. So I'm gonna take some Greek yogurt, about a fourth cup, and use a jar so it's easy to like shake and mix together. Then you want some Dijon mustard. We're gonna do about a tablespoon. The juice of one lemon. Probably, I don't know, a tablespoon or so of Parmesan. Cheese is gonna add a lot of fat and I don't want a lot of fat. And then a lot of pepper. I don't even know where this pepper thing came from. It's so weird to me, but it works pretty well. Seal your jar and shake it up. And then you have a nice, creamy, low-fat Caesar salad dressing. Normal Caesar salad dressing is like crazy fatty. So this is a really good, healthy, high protein from the Greek yogurt alternative. Now I'm going to cook the pasta. Then we're basically just gonna throw everything in the pan except for the basil. The recipe does say to add the parsley, but we're using basil and it can get a little too wilted if we add it too soon. Almost all set. Just gonna make my little Caesar salad, just romaine with some tomatoes. And this part is key. Put it in a bowl, plate on top of the bowl. 
and then you can really toss the dressing around. And that is a beautiful high protein meal. I just added some chicken that I already had prepped. Good morning, I'm gonna make a vanilla bean protein coffee. One of my favorite obsessions lately. Protein coffee is such an easy way to get your protein in. I think it's really important to get a majority of your protein and all your foods from whole food sources, but protein powder, I love my protein powder. I make my nightly protein ice cream, my protein coffee. It's a great way to get extra protein in, but make sure you're getting protein from other high quality sources. So I'm gonna make some protein coffee and then I'm gonna show you my other latest obsession, which is these protein pancakes. And so many protein pancakes have protein powder, but I'm gonna show you a different way to do that. Okay, you're gonna need your favorite protein powder, almond milk, vanilla bean paste. You can get this at Trader Joe's. I like to sweeten mine with stevia. And then I've got some homemade cold brew. gonna froth this up and I have kind of found out by accident that it makes it way creamier if you froth your milk and then add the protein. Basically double froth. Does that not look amazing? It's actually just so good. I know protein coffee might sound a little weird, but it literally just makes it so creamy and honestly like the best latte you've ever had. You won't believe that there's no fat in this. And the vanilla beans just make it extra fun. Okay, now I've had some caffeine and some protein. I wanna show you my breakfast obsession. It is so good. I've been calling them like protein crepes because they're really light and fluffy, but they're pretty much like a protein pancake. There is 25 grams of protein in one cup of egg whites, which is why you see so many high protein recipes using egg whites. Normal eggs have a not insignificant amount of fat, so it's just a better option to go for egg whites. So if we're gonna do the nutrition fat little trick, there's five grams of protein for one serving size, which is 25 calories. So 25 times four is 100, five times four is 20. You see what I'm saying? All you're gonna need, egg whites, obviously, oat flour. Oat flour is really just blended up oats. I'm just like skipping the blending part. But if you don't have oat flour, you can just blend oats it's like a half ratio. So a half cup of oats is a quarter cup of oat flour, which is what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna combine, just like any old pancake recipe, combine your dry ingredients. I'll put this on the screen so you can screenshot it really easy. Take a quarter cup of oat flour or half a cup of blended oats, one teaspoon baking powder, some salt. Just gonna mix that up a little bit. Then this is the trick. Get a biggish bowl and take your egg whites. I'm doing a cup. I like everything really sweet. You can sweeten to your heart's desire, but I just do a scoop of stevia, probably like two tablespoons. I, this is an old protein scoop. <laughs> Then get your high powered hand mixer or frother. This one is really high powered, so it works really well. And you're just gonna almost like make like a meringue. See how fluffy that gets? Then add your dry ingredients, mix them in, and then you just cook this batter like regular pancakes. Now I've got my beautiful protein pancakes, protein powder free, and I'm just gonna top with some berries and sugar-free syrup. And I promise these are as good as they look. I've literally been having them like every single day. I've just been craving sweet things lately ever since I've pretty much ended prep. Mm. Just made a little burger salad. I was gonna do a burger with the sweet potato buns, but then the burger was just way too big, so. And I love a blue cheeseburger. Look at that. One thing about me is I love a sweet treat and I love chocolate. So I'm gonna show you this high protein brownie I've been making. It's so good and yes, it has cottage cheese. That is what makes it high protein. So all you're gonna do is combine everything in a blender. And then we just blend this all together. 
should look like a thick batter. And then just take whatever little baking dish you've got. I've got these ramekins and some parchment paper and crumple this up and then it makes it easier to line the ramekin. And just add your brownie batter like this and bake it for 20 minutes at 350. Okay, we just went for a little walk and it was crazy windy, but now my brownie is all cool. I mean, it's still a little warm, so it's perfect. I made a vanilla creamy and I'm gonna have a little brownie and ice cream situation. You can actually pop it out of the parchment, which I'm gonna do just so it's a little cuter. And then this whole brownie is 35 grams of protein and 62 carbs, which is kind of a lot, but it's a treat. If you were to have a cake like this size or a real brownie, it would be like, I don't know, like 800 calories. It's almost like a lava cake inside. It's so good. Mmm. This thing is actually so good. It's not super sweet, so I definitely think you kind of need either a little protein ice cream on top or you could definitely add more honey if you want it to be sweeter. I like really sweet things, but this is so good. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. I hope this was some helpful information on why protein is so important and why each and every one of us needs a good amount of protein in our diet. Let me know if you liked this video and if you want me to dive deeper into other macros or what other things you wanna see from me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.